Glory be and mercy me. We're doing a, a dishwashing episode again. Ba 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 ba. Wash those dishes. <laughs> um, I mean, the news to talk about today is is, is uh, Julie Payette gets uh, canned as the governor of Canada. Okay. Um, this is like one of these non-news events. Okay. Here's here's my entire take from start to finish. How bad do you have to be at that job to lose it? Like. You're talking about the Liberal Party needs to actually, uh, uh, like, face a scandal, face a media firestorm, face all this kind of stuff to get rid of what is a ceremonial, meaningless position. Like, I'm sorry, like, the governor of Canada is, is like, a non-event, like, non-nobody. She literally, like, reads the throne speech. Uh, anytime the Prime Minister wants to prorogue Parliament... Uh, 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 the governor of Canada has to sign off on it, but they always do because their position has absolutely no power and they know they can be replaced uh, like is happening right now. So my question, and I haven't seen anybody in the media actually ask this question, is like, how bad do you have to be <laughs> to get to, to have the, the Liberal Party actually go after you for, for something that is, like, it's a meaningless, it's a holdover from when the Queen of England mattered, right? Like, it's just this absolutely meaningless position that could actually be replaced. Uh, and, like, the entire position could be diffused. And yet, here's the, a big scandal. And here's what I think is notable about this. Is that our media is talking about this. And it's going to write reams and reams of papers on this. But seems to not give a crap at all about the actual liberal scandal. Which is, hey, the liberals gave billionaires... Like, $600 billion in the middle of this pandemic. Like, why do you think billionaires are doing so well in the middle of this pandemic? Right? It's because the government is shoveling money into their faces. And we're all supposed to be like, oh, but that third is expensive. <laughs> when it's like literally like one-fourth or less of the price. It's it, like, what a total crapshoot that uh, uh, the media, it's like, they're willing, when it comes to the liberals, they're willing to make hay over, like, superfluous drama-based events, right? Like, this is something you would expect to see on a reality TV show, this kind of scandal of, like, oh my god, Justin Trudeau said of Julie Lafayette, you'll never believe what he said of Julie, Julie Lafayette. And we're all just supposed to be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe Justin said that. Eat that popcorn, right? <laughs> but it's, it's so... Without merit, it's pointless. Who cares, right? There are people in Alberta who are literally, like, losing their jobs and losing their livelihoods, right? There's a, uh, uh, there's, like, what is it called? A torch march gonna happen in Alberta here on February 20th, I believe that is. Like, I'm gonna be keeping my eye on that. Like, we're talking about the people in our country who are most likely to uh, uh, do what they did in America on the 6th form an insurrection, right? And our media is just completely unwilling to actually ask of the liberals, oh, hey, um, why do you keep abandoning the Albertans? Like, why do you just keep abandoning them, right? Because this is what's happening, you guys. Like, we, we take a look at our, our Albertan brothers and sisters who are now currently struggling and, like, sure, we can disagree on this whole, like, rugged individualism riff that they've been going on about. And, like, we can, and we can, sh sure, we can make a little light of that. I know I do. But the reality is, they've got bills to pay. They need food. They need shelter, right? They need these basic essential services. And their industry is completely drying up. It's exactly what happened to the Republicans. Uh, uh in the southern states, right? Like, they got abandoned. The manufacturing sector got completely decimated. These guys got completely abandoned. And the, uh, by the Democrats, incidentally. Uh, and of course, George Bush didn't do anything to help them. But it's the Democrats that bear the bulk of this. And they're continuously abandoned. And so what do you think they're going to do? Like, what do you think they're going to do? And the narrative that comes out in America, and I'm super worried that it's going to start coming out uh, to Albertans, is like, oh, these guys are just a bunch of white supremacist, uh, deplorable racists, right? Well, and don't get me wrong, 
there's definitely white supremacist racist deplorables in that group of people. Absolutely. But to take a look at, like, in the States, literally half the nation, uh, uh, and but in here in Canada, the province of Alberta, and try to paint them with that brush while simultaneously doing absolutely nothing to ameliorate their suffering... Well, and, and, and ignoring it to the level where we're going to like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that Julia Perrier and Justin Bieber, like, who cares? Who cares? Help these people. Help these people, man. Like, for real. Because there's legitimate suffering, and there's legitimate anger, and there's little legitimate angst, and it will not be ameliorated through the capitalist system. It just won't. These people won't be helped uh, uh, because Justin Trudeau decides to help them. Uh, uh, because he, he, he's had plenty of opportunity to help these guys. And instead of reaching out and trying to unify the nation and help anybody, he's literally just going to abandon them, right? He's just taking a look at the fossil fuel situation and just shrugging and going like, oh, well, I guess they'll starve. And that's what's happening. And we're supposed to kind of go along with that and like, what, snicker? Like, we're supposed to go like, haha, Alberta, eat it. That's what we're supposed to do. It seems like that's what we're supposed to do. And once the people of Alberta start to revolt against this, as they should, right? As they should, uh, they're, th the media is 100% just going to paint them as racist, white su supremacist deplorables, Right? They're just going to call them like the same insurrectionists that happened uh, uh, on January 6th. They're just going to try to eliminate their legitimate grievances. And this is something I've noticed about the insurrection that happened on the 6th in the States, right? Uh, uh, the legitimate grievances of that group of people, and there are legitimate grievances, and pretending like there aren't uh, is dangerous, right? And it's dangerous because if you ignore their legitimate grievances and you pretend like they don't matter and you make fun of them and mock them while simultaneously trying to make hay of, like, literal non-events, like, shit will go down. Shit will go down. And we're stuck in a divide-and-conquer strategy, right? We're stuck in this, like literal like oh it's the westerners and oh we're uh the it's these eastern ontarians and all this like growing up like <laughs> when i was growing up this dynamic definitely existed i i come from manitoba and there was definitely like an anti-ontario sentiment the the ontario was was oh they're just all these big wigs and these big they think they're so hot and all this kind of stuff and like now that I'm here, like, Ontarians don't view themselves that way. They're just trying to live their lives. And the reality is, like, Ontario has as much political power as it does because it has the most people, right? Like, it's, it, that makes sense that it would happen that way. But just because we have the most people doesn't mean we can ignore the rest of the nation. Doesn't mean that we should ignore the rest of the nation, as we have been doing, and as the liberals certainly have been doing. Um... And if we genuinely cared about the well-being of our nation, and if we genuinely cared about like what's going to happen to the people in our nation, we'd be passing a basic income. We'd be uh, offering support services. We'd be doing something. But his, that's not how Canadians act historically. Like that's the scary thing. Like we've had almost exactly the same thing happen, where an industry dried up or collapsed in our nation. Uh, and it affected multiple provinces, and we basically just told those people to get bent. We basically just told those people. I'm talking about the fisheries collapse that happened in the East Coast, right? Big fisheries collapse that happened on the East Coast, and all those people were told to eat it. They were just told, like, nah, get better, get, go get a better job, right? Just, just go get a better job, right? Like, they were told that they had to leave their home provinces, they had to leave their families, they had to leave their friends, they had to leave everything behind because there was no work for them uh, in the places that they were born uh, uh, amongst the people that they knew and cared about and loved. And instead, they had to go to Alberta to work in the tar sands. And guess what? Now that work's dried up too, for obvious reasons, right? The oil uh, runs out. 
Like, the fisheries thing is one thing. Like, that's an enormous scandal. But the, uh, the tar sands is just an inevitability. It just dries up, right? Like, it just, you stop producing oil. And it's very clear that our government and uh, the corporations that it serves uh, have either put no thought into it or simply don't care about what happens to these people, right? Oh, yeah, the oil dried up. Go, go get a better job. There's no better job. Like, there's no better job. This, this, this is not going to happen, right? And because in Alberta, the, the riff always was like, oh, you can make some money on the tar sands. But these corporations, they like raise the rent on everybody and raise the prices of everything so that it didn't matter that they were making more. They still ended up with like the same kind of uh, uh, position. And... <sighs> And we just keep falling for it. Like, as a populace, we just keep falling for the same obvious grift over and over and over again. And we don't actually, like, wake up and see that that's what it is. Like, it's obviously a grift. That we're being pit against one another, right? We're convinced that uh, prairie folk are like dangerous rural types who are all of gun nuts and all this kind of stuff, right? Because that's what our media jams down our throat while simultaneously completely ignoring their plight so that they can talk about Julie Payette for four days straight uh, when she's removed from a position that has no power, doesn't actually do anything, and is fundamentally meaningless. And... And incidentally, is something that no one outside of, like, us uh, uh, policy wonks or us, like, uh, uh, politics people are going to care about at all. When the, ele when the election rolls around, the populace is going to be like, who is that? I don't even know who that is. Who was that? Like, they don't know. They don't care. They don't care to know, right? <laughs> it's, such a, it's such a meaningless thing. And yet the media is just like, this is on the liberals. This is on the liberals. This is on the liberals. You know what's actually on the liberals? Like the desperation that's going on in Alberta. That's actually on the liberals. Uh, you know what else is on the liberals? The fact that the COVID cases are climbing all across Canada. That's on the liberals too, right? They could be passing all kinds of legislation. They could be doing all kinds of stuff. They could be getting in the way of these uh, premiers and saying, uh, hey, what you're doing is not good enough. Like we need better. But instead... They're just going to sit on their hands and do nothing, Trump style, uh, and expect their media outlets to just remain completely silent. While the only thing <laughs> that the right wing media is, is like, the left wing media is silent, and the right wing media is like, Justin Trudeau is a socialist. Like a bunch of total idiots. <laughs> like, jeez. I could go on at length about that, man. Oh, jeez. Like, imagine, imagine believing for a second that Justin Trudeau is a socialist. What the hell are you talking about? Like, what the hell are you talking about? You're living in a delusional dream world if you think that Justin Trudeau is a socialist. Justin Trudeau is a conservative capitalist. That's what he is. That's what his voting record indicates. That's what his actions have indicated. The only time that he's even reached for something that is even close to a progressive idea was the Serb, which he quickly dismantled once he realized what a mistake it was for him and his conservative buddies who dress in red and call themselves liberals. Anyway, this is the end of me, guys. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Hit that like button. Free to do. If you've reached it to this point, just hit subscribe, right? Super easy to do. Uh, 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 free, right? Share it around. Uh, hit that share button. Uh, send it to your buddies. Send it to all that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I'm on the path uh, because, hey, I'm trying to monetize and make this my full-time job. This is what I do while I work a full-time job at a toy store. Imagine what I could do if this uh, was my full-time job. So if you want to get your skin in the game, my Patreon's down below. Uh, a buck. That's really all I'm asking for, right? That's less than a Timmy's coffee. I think you can do it. All right, guys, you're doing great. I believe in every single one of you. You're doing the right thing. Follow your heart. Uh, good luck. We're going to need it.